Hello everyone, it's David here with some thoughts on this Good Friday. Good Friday is probably the most demanding day in the Christian year by far because it takes us into places and experiences we would all much rather avoid. It would be so much easier if Holy Week was simply about the journey of light and delight and joy from Palm Sunday to Easter morning, wouldn't it? And yet, the only route to Easter Day is the path that takes us to the cross on Good Friday. There's no other way to get to Easter. We have to follow the route of Good Friday and walk with Jesus to the place of his crucifixion. So it demands everything from us, and yet it is a place where the rewards are great, for it's here that we understand all that God has done for us through Christ. Here we see the true nature of the self-giving sacrifice of the one who became love for us. A while ago now, we visited the Bronte Parsonage Museum in Haworth, and walking through the churchyard, I was stopped in my tracks by this particular gravestone. It's a litany, a record of the most awful tragedy which befell one extended family from the middle of the 19th century to just about the end of that century. It records the deaths of the family members in a way that is shocking and so striking to us nowadays. It looks so unfamiliar to us. And yet, this was the norm for people living in those times when infectious diseases were the scourge. Cholera, tuberculosis, typhoid took so many far too young. So here on this headstone, we have the record of one poor family. James dead at one month, Mary at one year, Richard 17, Elizabeth only 18 and Robert 25. It does stop us in our tracks, this sense of tragedy. And yet, when you look at some of the other gravestones here in this churchyard, they bear a very similar story. And we are just not used to that level of grief, that level of pain, that level of suffering. At least we weren't until COVID-19 came upon us. And now we are feeling something of that sense of dread, that sense of the preciousness of life and of those closest to us in a new and very fresh way. What we see on that headstone in Haworth is becoming familiar in our own time. And so when I went to Coventry Cathedral, it was this image that really struck me. It's of Basil Spence's great crown of thorns, this huge metal sculpture framing the whole chapel. You can't see into the chapel except through the crown of thorns. And its effect is like that headstone. It is a reminder of such profound suffering and loss and torment and struggle. It is through this crown of thorns that we understand Good Friday. For it was placed on the head of Jesus as a sign of mockery to torment him, all that he was not in the eyes of those who wanted him dead. And yet it is his crown. He is the king of love in this moment. And we look through the crown of thorns, which represents the whole world's pain, and we see the angel of agony. Stephen Sykes's artwork which takes us into the Garden of Gethsemane and Luke's account of Jesus' struggle there. Here the angel of agony holds the cup of suffering out to Christ. Christ had asked, he'd begged, if it was possible to have this taken from him, please take it. 
what God does is sustain him in that moment, handing it back and giving him the courage to go the final steps of the journey to the cross. Jesus is sustained in that moment. And as we go through Good Friday, through all the horror and the terror and the lostness of that journey to the cross, we too are sustained by the one who hangs upon it. For this, chapel is a place where communion is celebrated, week in and week out. And there, as in every communion, we celebrate Easter. We remind ourselves that he is risen. It is the symbol of his victory over death and evil and wickedness. And so, through this crown of thorns and this angel of agony, we are drawn deep into what it is to be human. And we recognise the familiarity of Good Friday. Which begs the question... Where is Christ crucified today? Because crucified he is this and every day. Crucified wherever the pain is deep and the dread is terrible. Crucified where there is violence, where there is struggle, where there is abuse, where people are kept apart from one another because of the colour of their skin or the way they speak, their accent, where they have come from. He is crucified by all that divides and separates us rather than bringing us together, as does his cross. And they nailed him to it, says the Gospel. Those few short words expressing a whole universe and cosmos of hopelessness and hate and violence and pain. They nailed him to his cross because they didn't want him. They didn't want his message. They didn't want to change. They didn't want his challenge. They resented him. They resented what he represented. They resented the God he spoke about, a God of love and acceptance and welcome. And because of that challenge, whether to their religion or to the empire or to their vested interests, they nailed him to a cross. And we still do. And Good Friday shows us how we do it. It takes us into those uncomfortable places of our behaviour, both individually and collectively and as nations and societies. We see all the things that nail Jesus to his cross. We see greed, we see wickedness, we see war, we see conflict, we see hatred, we see unkindness, we see racism, we see stereotyping, nailing Christ to his cross in our time. I took this image in St Oswald's churchyard in Filey. It's a piece of striking Victorian grave art. It shows an angel holding a cross. Perhaps it represents the faith of the person who's buried there. Perhaps they were a believer who held tightly to the cross throughout their life. Or maybe they didn't. And here is a representation of hope that all is not lost and that at the ultimate end God will still welcome us home into eternity. And these two images express the choice at the heart of Good Friday. We either wield the nails and crucify him again, or we hold tight to the cross and we claim the victory of the cross for ourselves and this struggling, needy world. And here in this stained glass window from Coventry Cathedral is Christ bearing the weight of all of that. All of that struggle and pain, torment and heartbreak, violence and wickedness. He's bearing it all and you can see it etched into his face. The load almost too much to bear. The pain horrendous. The thought of what is to come all consuming. And here is the human face of God. Here is God bearing all of that for us. 
for he carries it for our sake. He's making this journey for you and me and everyone. He is confronting the worst of life for us with the very best of life, the very best that is the fullness of God's love for each and all. And here is Mary, his mother, lost in wave after wave of fear and dread and foreboding. Terror etched into her face too, the terror of one who knows she's going to lose her beloved. And in that expression we see the whole of the world's longing and need made clear. And in Coventry Cathedral too there is one sculpture above all which speaks into Good Friday with such power. It's this one. It's Christ crucified at the moment of his death by the sculptor Helen Huntingdon Jennings. An extraordinary way in which she has captured the very moment of Christ's death for us. The very moment of his sacrifice. It's made of metal recovered from a car crash in which lives were lost. And the sculptor has taken that tragedy and catastrophe and transformed it into the symbol of all catastrophes and tragedies for all time. And yet it's a symbol too of victory and of hope. It shows us that light will triumph over darkness, that this sacrifice transforms our understanding of ourselves and each other forever. For death is not the end eternity and God and love and grace and welcome in Christ they are the truth and Isaac Watts when faced with that truth says these amazing words that he gives us for Good Friday love so amazing so divine demands my soul my life my all and it does and it's why we have to journey through Good Friday and the cross to Easter Day to understand the magnitude and awesome nature of what God in Christ has done for you and me and those we love. This is the High Altar Cross in Coventry Cathedral. A stunning piece of work which pulls all of this together on Good Friday for us. It's by Geoffrey Clark and it's made of solid silver and plated with pure gold. What an expression of the priceless nature of Jesus' death on the cross. Incomparable, priceless, precious. This one moment in human history in which we understand all moments. And you can see it is being held in the space of the cathedral with those floor-to-ceiling stained glass windows which tell the story of God's love from the first moment of creation through the struggles of the Old Testament through to the Gospel through to today. The priceless, incomparable nature of God's love in Jesus that took him to the cross and then took him to Easter Day where he is risen for all time and eternity, death defeated. And this cross is in the abstract shape of a phoenix rising. How beautiful is that? What an emblem for Good Friday that is, that from all the torment and pain and darkness, the phoenix of God's love will rise and does rise triumphant. And in his last few words on the cross, Jesus turned to the penitent thief and said, Today you will be with me in paradise. His promise for all of us. And here is paradise, at least paradise in Scarborough. And what I love about this image is the way you see beyond and through. You glimpse what lies on the far horizon. And it's paradise. And that's what Jesus offers us this day, the promise of paradise. He gives us that glimpse from the cross of what lies beyond 
and what is true for all time and eternity. And it's from the heart of that truth that we stand on Easter Day when he is risen. But we only get there through the cross. As he died, he said, it's done, it's complete. And it is. It is complete, once and for all, the perfect completeness in which we see the perfection of God's love for all creation, for all time. The story with which the Bible opens, finding its climax in this one moment of great sacrifice, as the whole weight of the world and its sin is borne by God in Christ for us. Death is defeated and love is victorious, and paradise is glimpsed. And it's that completion that he offers to us on Easter Day, as we welcome him in his risen presence. But we only stand in that place by standing in this place on Good Friday. May God bless you deeply this day.